I'm Sam Taggart with Can't Knock This, host of the first ever Door-to-Door Con, bringing professional collaboration to the direct selling and door-to-door industry. Go register your seat for our event January 2018 at door-to-doorcon.com. I'm Sam Taggart with DDD Podcast. I'm here with this very special guest, Jimmy Rex. So those of you guys that know Jimmy that are watching this, like it, share it, send him some love because this is going to be a phenomenal podcast. Jimmy and I go way back. We've done a lot of different real estate deals together. Um, He's one of Utah's top real estate investors and real estate agents and just done some phenomenal things. You've taken a unique approach and grown one of the most most influential networks in Utah. You know, you've hosted massive Easter egg hunts with helicopters dropping eggs to, I mean, I don't know, you've done some crazy cool stuff. So Yeah, we have a lot of fun. Yeah, so yeah. I'm excited. Today we're going to talk about um, networking, we're going to talk about your hustle, kind of your story, we're going to talk about um, kind of just what what's your why and how you how you how you've grown to build such an amazing team and um, a lot of people that will listen to this are door-to-door people and um, I think a lot of stuff that you've done really applies to you know their industry and whatnot and we're excited to have you at door-to-door con hey know? thanks man yeah it'll be fun he will be anybody going to door-to-door con this will definitely be a workshop you won't want to miss he is a uh, super interesting has some awesome cool practices and some good philosophies Little also plug, he just started a podcast called The Jimmy Rex Show, and it is awesome. So his journey is to, yeah, tell us a little bit about that journey. Well, yeah, yeah, no, so the podcast, I just, I'm pretty lucky. I have a very um, awesome network, like you mentioned, that I just have some really cool people that I'm able to learn from all the time, uh, friends and just people around me, and I'm always soaking up all this information or learning all these cool stories and these things from them, and I just wanted to have a platform where I could kind of share that with my family, friends, or anybody that frankly just wanted to listen to it. And so I started the podcast, The Jimmy Rex Show. Uh, we've uh, released nine episodes so far. You know, we had uh, Sean Ray as the Attorney General for Utah on, Tim Ballard, the founder of Operation Underground Railroad. I uh, got Kyle Van Noy coming up pretty soon, the Super Bowl MVP. Um, every week I release a couple episodes, just amazing people from Utah doing amazing things. and uh, So it's cool. And hopefully people are getting a lot out of it, I think. So. And you guys can find that on SoundCloud or iTunes, The Jimmy Rex Show. So check it out. Um, I've listened to a few episodes. Very, very good interviewer. Very, you know, very cool people that you've interviewed. So well, thank well. you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so dive, let's dive into kind of the background. Because little do, I just found this out. Like we, we, we've done real estate deals together. And whatnot, and um, I found out you started in door to door. You you did, yeah. Well, I mean, I got a, I love the industry, so yeah. like it's funny because like you have so many people that aren't in the industry that try to be haters of door to door, right? Yeah. They'll try to hate on all the companies and what they do, and it's like I'm like, no, 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 no. Like you earn every dollar when you go out on the doors. Oh, I yeah. used to sell steak and chicken door to door out of a freezer out of the back of my truck. That's kind of when I. I, uh, well, I, even in high school, you know, I knocked a lot of doors to sell stuff. Like when I was a little kid, I was like, you know, selling pictures I drew or baseball cards door to door. And then I, um, you know, went on an LDS mission where I knocked a lot of doors. That's my mission was a door knocking mission. And so I got home and I got into, you know, I answered this ad in the paper, um, to sell meat door to door. And I went and I listened to them and I just kind of fell in love with the idea of it. And so this was before, this was 2003. So like, there wasn't like this whole push for the summer job thing. There was like a few people you knew maybe doing something, but I always, at the time, was like, I don't get it. They leave for the whole summer. Like, that makes no sense to me. <laughs> like, why would you it. give up your whole summer to go knock doors? I'm like, I'll just do it in Utah. So that was the only reason I probably didn't join one of the big ones back then. But um, but anyway, so I started knocking door to door, selling steak and chicken out of a freezer in the back of my truck. So yeah, I, I come from a background where I can really appreciate this industry. And I kind of have always been intrigued by all the guys that do it because I know how hard it is. You know, I yeah. know the, but the reward is so good too. And it's so fun when you knock on someone's door that had no intention of buying something, but yet you deliver it in such a way that they can't help but want it. That's cool to me. And so I really have always enjoyed the industry. That's cool. So you did that for a few years, right? Uh, yeah, so I did it for a couple of years. I, I wanted to go big with it. You know, we actually ended up hiring a franchise lawyer and we were getting that all set up That's crazy. and it was the same time the next church's chicken no, <laughs> well we were like, like it was so funny because we were trying to kind of play off the you know you've heard of like omaha steaks and uh-huh. stuff like that so we we're kind of playing off that we, the name of the company was the nebraska meat network and this totally crazy guy is the guy when i answered the ad in the paper his name was herman he was from the netherlands 
and um, fascinating human. Like to this day, one of the most fascinating humans I've ever met. He was like 6'5", had this funny accent, no teeth because he hated the dentist. But the <laughs> guy could – oh, dude, he could sell anything. To this day, best salesman I ever met. And every day I'd learn these life lessons from him. And he was fun, you know. And so yeah. we'd go sell meat door to door. And people had no idea. I mean, you know, you guys, I'm sure, experienced this selling security or pest or solar or whatever it is. Like, if people knew how much money you're actually making on the doors, their chins would just drop. Like, they kind of look at you like you're a schmuck because you're door-to-door salesman. And you're, you know, just made six grand that day or three grand or whatever. I mean, in meat, it's not quite that high. But, I mean, you're making... I was pulling in a thousand, two thousand bucks a day profit, you know. And, and so it was just funny because you're, you're hawking big cases of steak and chicken with 58 steaks in it and That's awesome. people just look at you like you're an idiot and this guy's charm Herman his whole genius was that people thought he was so dumb and I mean we were just killing it and yeah, he just, you know hi I'm from the Netherlands yeah I know he would like he had this funny accent he totally played it up and That's I remember one awesome. time this lady answered the door and she's I mean, she was a big lady, you know, she was a very large lady and he's, she's like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't eat meat or whatever. And, and he's, he, well, she goes, I'm a vegetarian. And he goes, ma'am, you're a vegetarian. And he just has this funny accent, you know, and he goes, he like looks at her like up and down and he goes, what do you eat? Like a whole pallet of carrots every day. <laughs> and it was it's huge. Yeah. It was so bad. I'm just like, Oh man, we're going to get kicked out of here. But she died laughing and she goes, you know what? I like you guys. I'll buy some for my friends. Oh, bought the case I never awesome. you know and I just learned like that power of having and you have to when you're selling door to door you know I've been on the doors one of the things that I really appreciate about this area of Utah is there's so many guys that have done it so I actually went out I've been on the doors with 50 to 100 different guys just for fun for a day you know the best of the best you know the Reno Mendenhall the Chris Burgess um, you know you name all the best guys in the industry it's funny because I listened to your podcast a few times and I've been on the doors with yeah, all these like, guys I know this guy. literally just wanted to learn from him I talked to Chris yesterday for like an hour because he's coming out and speaking at door oh door okay door. awesome yeah yeah um, I yeah, sold his house a few months ago he's a stud I love that guy yeah so. we were just reminiscing just on like yeah, yeah that's but cool. yeah I mean so I just you know for me you have to have fun on the doors and like and we made it really fun, but it ended up ending pretty poorly. But Herman was on drugs, and I didn't know this. But <laughs> smuggling, yeah, buying cocaine. Yeah, <laughs> well, not even smuggling, just using my money that was in the company mostly. So it ended up falling apart at the end. But it was one of those it's things. A good that, learning. Experience. Well, to this day, I, I, well, it's funny because I had a partner too that I was into it about a hundred grand. Hundred. In fact, I ended up with a hundred twenty grand debt when the whole thing fell apart. Um, basically, we franchised this guy in St. George, this guy from um, Argentina. He gave us his life savings to buy a franchise, right? And uh, Herman took the money and disappeared for two weeks. We'd been working together as a you know a company for about two and a half years, and he came back two weeks later wearing the same clothes he was wearing the day he left, and you know he's balling. He's like, I spent all of our money. I blew that guy's money, like thirty five grand of it, and. I was like, we're going to go to jail. Like, we're not even franchised yet. We weren't supposed to take his money. We weren't, I knew we weren't legally able to do that. And I was like, and the money's gone. So I was like, I just told her, and I said, I love y'all. I always appreciate you, but never want to see you again. And uh, he went his way, and I got stuck with all this debt. And I had a partner, a buddy of mine, that had about 40 grand debt into the company on a credit card he put. He wanted to be like, I think we gave him like 10% ownership or whatever. And, um, and after the whole thing fell apart, I just dove. That's when I dove into real estate. I was like, okay, I've got all this debt. I better go to work, you know. Yeah. And so I actually, I made a poster board. I tell this story all the time, but because it was, to me, it's just a very cool thing that, you know, in that moment as a 24, 25 year old kid, I made a poster board of everyone I owed money to. And it was 120 grand. I mean, you got, you know, I owed the. Mountain America, sixty grand. I owned, owed our lawyers twelve grand. I owed the landlord this. I owed the propane company. I owed the meat supplier. I mean, all these people, you know. And I called them all up. I explained what happened. I said, I'm going to pay you back, but I need some time. And uh, one by one, I so when I started selling real estate, I'd get a check. I'd start crossing them off. And a year and a half later, I I got it all, you know, wow. paid off. But yeah, anyway, that's how I got into real estate, which is kind of funny because I'd been knocking doors selling meat door to door. That's crazy. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the real estate journey. It sounds like in 2005. 2005, I got my license. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the time, it was the market was crazy. Right when I got in, it was like any idiot could sell a house. I mean, it was it was insane. Like if 
you watch the movie um, The Big Short. Yeah. That was my life for like three years. <laughs> like that movie s- makes me laugh so hard because it's so are accurate. Your favorite, your favorite customer. <laughs> like it's a joke, but like we had um, next to my first real estate office, there was an escort business. I kid you not. And <laughs> That's so I'm not funny. even making this up. They'd come in. All, there was one guy in my office that like had the corner on these escorts, and they were buying homes all the time. So it literally was just like in the movie, dude. That's and so I just funny. I didn't know they were escorts until one of the guys in the office is like, well, yeah, that's. But they were all buying these three, four, five hundred thousand dollars houses one after another. You know, his whole business was <laughs> was so that funny. one. But anyway, so, um, but like anybody could buy a house, and so like you know, I my first six months weren't great. I got in, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, in fact, I sold five or six homes in my first six months. I was doing okay. I mean, I was you know like the nice thing about real estate is each sell you know you make pretty good commission. Um, but I mean, I was about ready to like quit. I didn't. I just didn't know what I was doing. I didn't like the feeling of not being great at it. And uh, and true story. But that was I was kind of doing that in the meat at the same time. And then the meat, I completely put it down. I said, I'm done with this. Like, don't want to do it anymore. After Herman did that, you know. And, Good old Herman. Oh man, I love that guy. But yeah, I'm pretty sure he's probably dead somewhere. But <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard from him since that day. No joke. But anyway, if you're watching this, Herman. Yeah. High yeah. five us if you're alive. <laughs> Give us a sign. Bark twice if you're in Milwaukee. Bless his heart. Nothing would make me happier than knocking on the door and like Herman was there selling me steaks. Like that would make my day. What? Yeah, it'd be pretty funny. But I mean, I didn't have any animosity towards him because like I just immediately said, all right, like I had fun two years. I learned so much. I'm going to dive into this other thing. And the other guy that I was telling with that had the 40 grand debt, he like ruined his life. He was so upset. He ended up bankrupting because of this 40 grand, you know, and and he just kind of let it eat him up instead of just all right. Well, like let's pick let's up the pieces and go. Well, yeah. that's such an impris- like it's a principle in life. It's like you have two choices: you can find the gift, or you can mope and be the victim. Yeah, you it's, got one of two choices. Yeah, it's, it's it is much, what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what I, people are always like, well, how did you make that happen? I'm like, I don't know. I didn't really have a choice. Like, what else yeah. was I going to do? Like, you go do something, you know? But yeah, so when I got into real estate, and then I hired, I actually went to this seminar. It was kind of funny, because like, I was like just a punk kid. I was hat backwards, jeans ripped, you know? And I was just, I showed up to this seminar, and I hadn't sold very many homes, and I was kind of in a desperate situation. Like, my, I had this debt, and you're a young kid. You're like, you think it's the end of the world having that kind of debt. And I just knew I was going to pay it off. I didn't, I just, all right, I got to work, you know? And uh, anyway, so I go to the seminar on day one at the seminar. I'm just like, wow, this is really good. All the stuff I wanted to know about real estate that I never did. And at the end of it, they talk about this coaching program. It's $1,000 a month. And I remember thinking at the time, I'm like, $1,000 a month? That's like more than my condo payment. You know, I'd buy this little condo. And I was like, these guys are insane. And then day two, I went. And they, well, they gave us a homework. And I went home and did it. And it worked. And it was like, I got a couple of leads. And same thing happened day two. And day three, I went up to the speaker. To this day, is one of my best friends, a guy named Bill Pipes. I said, dude, I need to I need to sign up. I don't have a credit card that's going to clear, but if you can take the info and then call me in 45 days. And he did. That's He's awesome. like, that's, let's do it. Let's sign up. And the next six months, I well, I ended my first year with over 60 cells. So I had six in the first six months, and then that next six months with my coach and knowing what to do, what to say, how to say it, and then having that accountability behind it and everything, I sold 50 something deals and so and months, that kind of yeah. my career just took off from there yeah. that's awesome and now you've done over 1800 deals I mean that like yeah. that's a lot of freaking real estate like that's millions and millions yeah of it's cool when you think about how many like because people when somebody buys a house like that's their life yeah right? like like, like that's where a kid home. grows up that's like there's so much accountability behind that so I really take a lot of pride in like knowing you know, which neighborhoods really are the best ones and which houses are going to give them the best experience and trying to really listen to the client of what their needs are and how their life's going to go from there. So I'm going to shed some fun light for those that are watching this or listening. Jimmy calls me one day. Hey, Sam, you got about 10 minutes to tell me if you want to buy this place or not. I was like, I told him, I was like, hey, you know, I was like, hey, I'm looking for some investment. Well, I knew it was going to sell any second. And so I literally knew that we had about 10 seconds to sell it. Yeah, it was like, it was like, okay, Sam, you've got, like, literally call me back within 10 minutes. Like, here's the numbers. Here's the cap rate. Here's what it's going for. But it's going to sell, like, right now. And literally, we put in an offer what, 10, 15 offers come in right after ours? Oh, yeah, ours yeah and, we and literally like, had a it, very short window to get it. We got that one. What, a year later? Do it again. Mm-hmm. I get a call. Sam, you got any money? Because this, this is a winner. You need to get this now. I'm like, what, tell me about it. 
five minutes later, yeah, yeah, go put an offer in. Same thing. Ten other offers in. Well, you became my first and, call because you acted. You know, yeah, like I, I, I have so many people like, yeah, I want to buy an investment property. You know, find a great one. And it's like I don't have time to do the spreadsheet sometimes. Like I just know. Like trust me, let's put it on a contract. I'll get you whatever info you need. But you kind of got to just trust me here, yeah. and I'll give you the numbers no, the best I can. But what's but. funny is, I, you know, and I'm not like some seasoned guy that's bought a thousand homes or whatever. Sure. I'm like, uh, okay, like if I, you know, don't screw me. You f- like you're but all that one I you. called you on, I, mean, I know you ended up cash flowing how much? No, on that so thing? yeah, it puts him like wild it's a weird threeplex and i mean i had to it ended up not even appraising for like near what it was what we had to pay for because it was like a single family but it's three units and um yeah we it, i think my mortgage on it's like 1700 and my rents are 49 i think you just upped it to five grand yeah you're uh, literally putting three grand a month on that yeah place. i'm like that literally like i feel like okay those, don't lose, ex- those probably those, don't exist yeah, as much like, right now but at the time they did, it was know. insane and i was like Wait a minute! I could like live off this if I wanted to live super poor. Like I'm, I'm like set. Like yeah, it's like it, a teacher salary that one unit. Literally, yeah. yeah. I'm like it's like this is my wife's part time job. I don't do anything. Um, no, but it was so cool. Like just to those that have like are looking for real estate guys, like Jimmy's fun to work with, just simply because literally they tried to back out a contract like three times, and you were like, no, you're in contract because they realized. Oh, this is probably worth a little bit more than what I'm selling it for. Yeah, they had other offers coming in much higher as well. Yeah, happened. way higher and. So then it was like, you fought it. And then we even got him down because it didn't appraise. And then we negotiated down another like 15 grand off of it. So we did. Like, well, the thing that I've, a lot of people in real estate and you price in your industry, those that keep progressing, keep learning, keep trying to grow, just get a huge advantage over those that don't. And so in real estate, it's very easy to get a real estate license. But like when I got in, I just made a commitment. I've had a real estate coach from day one. I've hired you know the best of the best. I've had four of the top five real estate people in the world that have been my personal mentors. I've paid a lot of money for that. So let me ask you this: Right now, do you have any coaches? Or yeah, coach? I have. Yeah, so I have a I have a real estate coach right now. But yep. you're the best in Utah, right? Like, well, why I mean, do you need a coach? No, and here's the funny part: is all the best stuff that I'm doing. Like my real estate coach gives me these ideas. So my coach is a guy named Bill, yeah. and he literally only coaches agents to do 75 or more homes a year. Um, and what he's done is he basically has all of them networked and he just gets the best ideas from each one. And these are agents from all over the country. So everybody's willing to share what they're actually doing. And then we share with each other. And so like a lot of the stuff I, you know, people are like, Jimmy's a marketing genius. Like most of these ideas are some other agent in Pennsylvania or Newport beach or something did the same thing. And I'm just copying it. And that's um, it. And it's the power. I mean, that's another purpose of like DDD and what I'm building. It's a lot of people think like, Oh, this is stupid. Why would I go to door to work on? Or why would I learn? from those guys I got it all yeah. I'm sitting there going are you freaking kidding me like I'm creating a collaboration of like the baddest days in all industries in all the country and people and still people are fighting it well that's like, the same wild. reason I went and knocked doors with because I actually joined um, a solar company for a few months I just wanted to learn from everybody and get to know these guys like I always had this itch of like man should have I kept with door this about four years ago and what happened is I went and got my masters in real estate from Arizona State and while I was down there um, I'd set my team up in such a way that it was actually the best year I ever had. While I was gone at Arizona, I sold over 180 homes that year. My team did. Wow. And so I thought, I kind of got a little bit uh, prideful or whatever. I thought I could just do two jobs at once. And so I took on this manager role with um, a solar company in California. And uh, I did it for about three and a half months. It just wasn't what I wanted it to be. It wasn't what I thought it was. I was missing real estate. I knew real estate's kind of my gig, you know. And so I quit, but for a month, I went around to every office of all the guys that I'd met, and I met the most amazing people, you know, and I ended up selling homes to like a dozen of them, but I just wanted to learn from the best. I literally went and knocked doors with guys that you've interviewed on your podcast, and I learned so much from each one of them. Like to me, it was like these guys are. I, I could be like this prideful. Nobody sells more homes than me, real estate agent. But I was like, no, I want to learn what they're doing. That's that much better, and so it, I reached out and, to a lot of them. And it's one of the biggest killers of success is ego. Mm-hmm. I think like, and that and that's that's it's super cool. And I, I really want to touch, and that's something I like admire about you. It's just the humility of like, we can always learn. And you've up leveled your network. You continue to up level who you associate with, and you continue to up level because too many people in this industry. Like they go, they're 22 years old, they go make 60 grand and they're like, dude, I'm like the most bad A. I'm like, yeah, of your circle, you probably are the most bad Yeah, I have a funny it's, saying. I say if you're the funny, or if, if you're the wealthiest guy or the smartest guy in the room, smartest mostly, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you need to find a new room. Yeah. Like, you know, I love 
feeling stupid around my friends. One of the reasons with the podcast, what I've really enjoyed is, I mean, I interviewed Dave Bateman and Trevor Milton, and they both have tech companies that are close to, you know, values of close to a billion dollars on both of them. They both, Trevor started his, two, two and a half years ago, it didn't exist, nothing. It was an idea in his head. And Bateman built his out of his basement, you know, in Trotta, um, here in Nikola Motors, are the two companies. And I interviewed these guys, and it's so funny because, like, I always was like, ah, maybe I should have done a tech company. And, dude, I interviewed these guys, and they are so much smarter than me. And I'm literally, like, right. I'm laughing. I'm like, no, I've maximized my skill set of what I have. But I love being around them because I literally just soak up all this information. Like, you can't sit in a room with Dave Bateman for 10 minutes and not feel, like, smarter when you leave, you know. And all these guys. So the podcast has been really cool because every time I meet with these guys, these are my friends. And... I'm able to just soak up this information. But. Yeah, and everybody's heard the quote, your network is your net worth, but you've taken that to like a whole new level. And kind of tell us a little bit of like maybe your philosophy on the importance of having a network and what that's done for you and like kind of how it's reciprocated. And Well, I just I always like, you know, like Zig Ziglar, everybody's heard the quote, like, you know, if you want to get everything you want in life, help a lot of other people get what they want. That's one of my favorite quotes. And I just always kind of realized, like, I saw, like, when how people would treat me. And when pe- somebody's trying to get something from you, like, it doesn't feel good. But you know that that's what's going on. But if somebody just genuinely does something for you with, like, no strings attached, like, you'll go to the end of the earth for that person. It's kind of like an empowering of you when somebody does that for you. And so I just kind of started building my whole business and really tried to make it a focus my whole life of just... Like, anytime I meet somebody, so, like, people will be like, how are you friends with so-and-so? Or, like, you know, like, I've been, you know, like, we just did our big black tie gal a couple weekends ago, and um, Rudy Gobert spoke with me on the stage, you know, and Paul Hutchinson, guy who runs an $8 billion fund here in Utah, and, you know, Sean Ray is attorney general. People are like, how do you, like, get where these people are, like, legitimately your friends? And I just said, look... I came to them with not wanting anything from them. I didn't ask for anything. Yeah, I literally showed up. Like, hey, can you invest Yeah, in and you kind of feel it you... when people do that, yeah. you know? And I literally showed up and said, how can I help on every one of them? And like with Paul, you know, he was so used to like these people coming up and trying to get stuff from him. He was working with Operation Underground Railroad. I said, dude, I'm in on this thing. I want in. I want to help. And even people that want to help with that, a lot of times they kind of want to help on their terms. Yeah. So it's I like... kind of said like, dude, what do you need? And he's like, well, if you really want to do this... He's like, we're having a dinner on Saturday at 6000 bucks a table. And I said, fine, put me down for a table. Like, that's that hurt. I stretched to do that, you know. He was like, but right away he's like, oh, all right, this guy's This uh, guy's real. This guy's, yeah. And then we went, and I said, dude, I'm serious. Like, I want to help. I want to be a part of this. And uh, he was like, well, you know, if you want to go on a mission, you got to do this training. you got to pass this class, and then you got to fund the whole mission. And I mean, it was the same price as my new truck, basically, you know. And I cut him a check and said, here you go, man. Let me know if I can get on a mission. And he just, he, you know, he tells a story a lot. He's like, yeah, I just knew right then. Like, okay, Jimmy's a guy that we want on board. I just came from a place of contribution. I try to do that with everyone I meet, you know. Like, even with you, it's like, how can I help? It's not, I'm never trying to get something. And I, I've realized in my own business with being a real estate agent, like, um, I can try to just beg everyone for business or whatever. I've just, just tried I mean, to... how many people get hit up all the time? Hey, let me sure. sell your house. Let yeah, me and there's, I mean, there's this cheap, like, you know, there's like, you can try to do a discount nowadays. You can do all these different things. But like, people know, like, you know what? Jimmy is an expert. Like, when he was at the top of his game, he went and got his de- master's in real estate development so he could be that much better. Like, people know with my experience, my team I've hired, you know, I pay my team more than anyone in the Valley. I know I do because they're the best. But... Because of that, people get a different experience with me, and then they can be like, oh, wow, like, I want to refer Jimmy. I've made it easy to call me and just want to work with me, right? And so that's what I've kind of tried to build with my network is just – and I think networking, people make the mistake. Like, I don't even have business cards. Like, if I meet you, like, I'll just sit there and try to get to know you, and if we click – Either you'll be asking me for my number, I'll be asking for yours, or we'll add each other on Facebook right there, or something like that, and we'll try to really connect, right? And I just try to come from that standpoint always, and then just good things happen. I mean, you literally, you take care of people, and they want to go to bat for you. Well, think of, like, think of this valley, even, and how many people are all trying to recruit, even the same pool, right? And it's like, how many times is that return missionary he's 22 he's a stud he's athletic just been like hey you're gonna come do summer so you know what i mean it's just always an ask it's yeah. always a well i'll give you an example I, I got a buddy he does the um the lantern festival it's his okay. company he started and he does the slide the city and all that my buddy tr and um 
and I went and I had a picture on Facebook with me and TR that you know we posted of us and we went to we actually went to Hong Kong uh, this summer him and I for a slide the city and this dude hit me up and he's like hey man I saw your pictures with TR I've been trying to get an appointment with him I want to sell the products that you guys sell at the that you give away at the thing and it would be really big for my business and I was like dude I haven't heard from you in like six years like you know I do real estate. You know I've like you haven't bothered to send me one referral. You didn't even use me to buy or sell your house, and I didn't care. But I'm like, your call starts with, can you hook me up with your friend? That like, and I just I actually called him out on it. I said, dude, you're coming. This is to me such a violation of how a relationship is built, right? And I'll be honest. So this year I threw my event, my big party, and he donated a couple hundred bucks for the party. And I was like, all right, cool. He gets it now. He's starting to, I, but he even said, he's like, thanks for, you know, telling me that. Like that was a a moment for me where I had to do some introspection. Like he just, he saw an opportunity and he wanted to jump on it. Right. Yeah. Instead of like, how can I contribute and be an asset for the last six years? Whereas he just immediately wanted something. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'm, I'm assuming some of your clients haven't come year one, even year two. Like, you do these events. Like, oh, I have clients that I've yeah. literally, or not, I can't even call them clients. I have friends that have been to 20 parties that I've thrown, yeah, you, and they you, still have never used me to buy or sell a house. I don't care. Yeah, like, it's this unattached, like, I'm going to throw a movie night. It costs you, what, per movie? Whatever, yeah. yeah like, call you it You buy each grand, seat at yeah. their actual cost. Yeah, so. so call it 20 grand, 30 grand, or 10 grand, Well, it's a couple whatever. grand, but yeah. yeah a couple still, grand, yeah. it's like... You know, I'm not asking anything. Like, I just go have a good time, bring your friends. I get these texts all the time. We did that gun one. The, oh, yeah, the we're ammo thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, I get a text from Jimmy. Hey, man, I rented out this gun vault, and we're going to go shoot cool guns. Well, one of the things I do is I, like, try to, I try to plan networking, too, though. Because, like, I just try to create situations where cool people can meet each other. So I'll introduce people all the time. Like, if you go through my texts... Like every fifth text is me with two people on it, connecting two people. Yeah, it's I'm like, just like, oh, hey, he's a perfect guy for you. He's that's a perfect right. guy, and that's a huge give. Because yeah, giving referrals. It's the it's the giver. It's the go giver. Well, and people get nervous of like, I'm going to be cut out of this, or what am I going to get? And I just am like, if I connect two great people and they have a great experience, that's going to come back. You to influence. Me, you know? yeah, there's you no become. negative can come from that. And so I do it with honestly, I do it with dating. Like people, like it's funny because like if anyone gets a divorce on their first call because they got to sell a house and they know I'll, I'm connected to a lot of high value men and women and so that you know they want to get set up with a good date they'll give me a call and so it's like and i'm You're more than happy no i like i've set I up 20 people that have gotten married though you that's know that's awesome yeah that's it's kind just, of good though yeah, it's a every high... time every time they go oh so how'd you two meet oh our buddy jimmy and and just your 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 net worth or your well net, it's funny because this girl texted me a couple of weeks ago and she's like um our wedding video is a little embarrassing because my husband's telling the story of how we met and it's like well we first met at jimmy's event and then I ran into him again at, on Jimmy's softball team. You know, and it's like yeah. I'm just putting together opportunities for people to like well, come what together. It, what it does is it creates a relationship equity, is what I call it. It's sure. like what's the equity you have invested in this relationship? And I think a lot of people are unintentional, or they're they're not intentional about like, hey, I'm not asking anything. I'm just here to create opportunity. And like some of your events. Um, it's like, when do you ever get to go to an Easter egg hunt where a helicopter drops Easter eggs? Or when do I get to go to a gun gun vault and shoot an M5 or whatever right. it's called? M- yeah, yeah, M5? yeah. I don't know the big gun. The big gun. The big one. The 50 the, caliber. Yeah, but like literally makes your heart hurt. When yeah, you, my shoulder's still sore. It's like, ow. Uh, but it's like, I would never get to experience something like that. So now I associate, my your relationship equity went up due to the fact that now I associate a cool experience because you just created that. Well, and honestly, like even if nobody, like if tomorrow I quit doing real estate, like I'd still do all this stuff because it's just a fun way to live, right? Yeah. So I've kind of found a career for me that kind of fit a really cool way to live and be able to give back, which I don't know where my life ends. I feel like my journey is just starting, you know? Yeah. But at the same time, it's like it's fun because I have a lot of, um, I really feel like my network of people is a genuine network and it's, I have the best friends in the world, man. Like, but then you feel, you could almost even call it a culture. Like there's a culture around how you operate. Sure. I yeah. I mean, well, if you don't, attractive. yeah, because if you don't fit our culture, you're not going to be invited back. Like, if you come and you don't come from contribution, like, it's going to be pretty quick before you know. It's not like we're going to like kick you out, but like the same thing, you're just not going to be invited. You know? Yeah. No, and I think, but that it, it, everybody in this business is always like, how do I recruit more guys? How do I build my team? How do I have a? How do I have better retention? Because you know, I'm I get hit up by other realtors all the freaking time. Like I literally, because I just listed one and or I'm listing a home, and it's like, hey, I know you're about to list. Like list with me, blah blah blah. And it's like, no, like why would I list with you? I'm going to list with you. Like, you know what I mean? And it's just yeah. like. I have this relationship equity where they're just calling me just to try to make money and I know that and it's like I value 
And I think... Well, that was even with your door-to-door con. I loved that you're doing something pretty cool, right? Like, I'm like, dude, I want to be a part of it. I hit you up. I'm like, hey, you've entrusted me to be your real estate agent. I've sold you these properties, and now you know I'm going to be listing your property here pretty soon and, and next week or whatever and all these things. It's like, how can I help you? I just... I was thought it was cool. I was like, I yeah. like when my friends do cool things. I'm in. Like, yeah. you know, I didn't. How can I help you? I, I'll be a sponsor. Like, whatever. And, and, I, and I think I think what's cool too is like, it's 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 most recruiters or most networkers they're not creative or they're not ballsy enough to go put their money on the line too. Yeah, most you gotta, people are too You got to pay to play like, if you really want to up your. People don't realize. I mean, I don't know if you're open to this, but like, you probably invest. Just in networking alone, I bet you invest. I have a budget for networking marketing, and it's over six figures a year. Yeah, yeah. just for that. I, I've actually calculated. I have a group I call my elite group. There's over 250 people in it, okay? That's my, like, best of the best. These people, I know they'll use me if they need to sell or buy a home. And I I know per person, I average about 52 bucks a year spent on each person. Really? Yeah, so, like, I know how much yeah, just you've on you calculated it down to the... $52. Yeah. Like, the, like the fact that you've done the math well, on that. Well, I just that, know how much I've spent on that group, specifically yeah. just that group. That's not even including my other stuff, yeah. but just that group I know, and I know how many people are in it, so I can calculate but per person. You and know. I bet you probably could calculate the return on the investment. Yeah, right? I mean, it's it's huge. It's the best part of my... You know, my entire business is referral-based at this point. So yeah. um, I used to... When I started, it was not. I mean, I literally, my first five years, it was eight to noon knock or, uh, calling for sale by owners all day long. Uh, keep going. Yeah, yeah. So, are we still on Facebook Live here? Yeah. Okay. He's got to reset the camera, but no. So, those first uh, couple of years, that's what it was. Though it was, I was just calling for sale by owners all day, and I hated it. But at the same time, it was like it had results, right? Like yeah. I, it, I think it'd be the equivalent if you were in an area where you didn't enjoy knocking, but you're making sales, right? Whatever you're selling, and and so I built it that way. But then in 2010, I made this shift where I no longer had to do that. I just took care of my network. And it's such a more fun way to do business. Oh. I love it now. And so, like, I just honor these relationships. I love them. And, you know, I'll do whatever I can to help them with their life because it's just made my life and my career really fun. And yeah, and you probably love – yeah, life has got to be so much more enjoyable. Yeah, it's when you, when it's like you almost consider all your clients, it's like, no, they're all my friends. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I've met half my best friends on vacations that I've been able to go on because when I go, we just have a great time and then they become clients and friends yeah, as well, like, you know. And so I think of, it just kind of wrap this like part of this up is it's very, it, it's never not worth it to invest in your, in, in, in your own business, in your equity, in your relationship equity, in my opinion. And I think also a point that maybe we touch a little bit more on is you talked about one coach that you still have in your humble, you know, humble attitude of like, Hey, I'm still paying this guy. And, and that's oh, yeah. where I learn all my tricks. Like I have a coach and you know, you you don't only have a, a real estate coach, but what other coaches do you have? Yeah, no. So I have a I have a life coach that I got through Tony Robbins. Um, I just you know, in my overall once a week, I I talk with her on the phone, and she just really helps me to organize my thoughts. It's a completely unbiased opinion. We've never met in person, but I feel like I'm this person as well as anyone in the world. You yeah, because you can just be so raw, a hundred percent raw and, and vulnerable, real, yeah. and and, it's and like, she will call me out on my shit, which nobody does. So exactly, that's a it's like it, it, and and that's the power. Like you know, DDD will have its own coach division and, and, and it's a big part of like the business that I'm growing and I think it's interesting because I, I feel like a manager they're and especially in door to door sure they truly don't manage due to one problem well if I'm if I call you out on your shit what are you gonna do you're gonna get mad at me you're gonna get this like pride and you're just gonna go to some other company so I'm gonna lose you so we, you need we, the out of town expert with the briefcase you yeah, know you it, need it, a third party that can actually and it's 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 a problem is just because we can't manage with true authenticity we can't manage with true like 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 true direct yeah I like fear of loss I like being able to hire somebody that will really tell me how it is because I think the saddest thing to me is somebody that doesn't want to make adjustments and changes in their life right it drives me insane with the political thing where like oh he flip flopped it's like dude he grew like does a guy need to have the same opinion at 35 or 40 that he had when he was 21 like I love that you can evolve and adapt like anything I say about like my political beliefs or spiritual beliefs I always say by the way I reserve the right to change my mind whenever I want because it's a mind I I don't care what yeah these are me like I'm just trying to figure this all out on the fly as new information comes in my 
output is going to be a little bit different. And so I always say, you know, but yeah, so having those coaches, you know, I even have a relationship coach too. That I read a book that was just an amazing book about how to really try to understand women and, and how to show up the right way for them and, and just be your authentic self and things like that. And I love the book. Tony Robbins talks about it. And I just reached out to the author and she agreed to coach me personally. I've worked with her for the last you know year as well. And so, That's crazy. That's yeah, awesome. I, I highly value an expert's opinion and people that will really look at my situation and say, here's where you're struggling. Here's where you need improvement. Because again, it's the saddest thing as a person that just tries to, instead of like get it right, they just want to be right. And I think it's so 100%. important to try to get it right. No, and it's, it's so funny because I've had people like, I just had a guy, I was like, hey, are you coming to do a work on? He's like, no, man, I, I don't have like, you know, a couple hundred bucks to go. Like, and I'm like, really? Like, that's probably why you need to be I, there. I, I was like, whoa. Well, like, along those that. lines though, dude, like, I'll stop here because like, when I went to that first seminar, I didn't have the money to go. Like, yeah. I was, I just found out I had 120 grand debt hanging over me from the meat company, dude. And it was like the worst timing. But literally my entire life, plan my path that's led me to what I feel is a very you know exceptional life that I get to live started that day I went to that seminar no kidding yeah like I was thousand dollars it was went again yeah well even the original sign up it was like three four hundred bucks I don't even know what it was you know but that even that was like a life-changing moment I don't even know what happens who knows where my path goes if I don't do it It gives me chills to think about that's crazy yeah so what is your why like what is what gets you out of bed like the bigger purpose the yeah, the vision. I, I think your why is always changing and evolving yeah. and things like that. But um, like when I started in real estate, my why was getting rid of that debt. Yeah, it was out of necessity, that. right? Can't and then like, and then when I finally got it all paid off, then my why was to get you know like I wanted wealth, probably for the wrong reasons. But you're 26, 27. Then all of a sudden the market crashes, right? Then all of a sudden my why is to survive again. Um, literally, you're working so hard. 2008, 2009, 2010 was just a grind. Um, but you know, last winter I went to date with destiny and with Tony Robbins and uh, you go through for four days to really figure out your why your purpose in life and all these things and I came up with one that just absolutely lit me on fire and it was basically the purpose of my life is to love all of God's children uh, bringing happiness to others through my playful soul and by being an example of living an extraordinary life and is and that, is that memorized? Is that that's like, memorized. Okay, that's, that's what ingrained. I was going to say. I was like, yeah, I, 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 I you go could tell that. that was very... I go through that every morning. That's cool. Yeah, because no. that's, my, that's my why, right? Like, I want to show people, listen, like, I don't know what your belief is after this life. There's only one life like this. So I'm going to live the thing up. I'm going to really try to live a passionate, extraordinary life and just really share that love with as many people as I can. And the more opportunity you do that with, the more chances you do that with, the more it just lights you up even more. You know, I think life is about giving and, and service and those things. And so, like, I've had some really cool experiences. I've been able to do some cool things, and um, that's what kind of lights me up, you know, being able to give those experiences now to others is what I really love. And so um, more and more, I, you'll, you know, I just do that, and I just I love it. That's cool. Um, one last thing that I wanted to jam on, which I thought was really interesting, because and, and I and I've been telling myself, I'm like, oh, I want to circle back around to this. So you went to, and this this is totally on its new path. But yep, um, you said you went to Arizona and got your master's, and you still sold 180 homes from Arizona, and you were man, you know, just kind of out of it. Every manager, and 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 I've had this problem. This is why I'm asking this is. If I go on a freaking three day trip, <laughs> yeah. my whole team goes. <laughs> everything falls it's, it's, apart. It's like everything falls apart. So, yeah. I guess the question would be, and it's funny because it's like you're doing this underground thing, you're doing the podcast, you're doing the. There's so many different things that you're doing. You travel, you date, you have a good life. Yet, your business thrives with without you. You have a phenomenal team, delegation, um, and you've 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 structured it in a way, like you said, you have the best team. So like. What have you done from a management standpoint to run your business to where you feel you've empowered these people in a, like, what, yeah, what are some Well, practices? going to Arizona was accidentally the best thing I ever did because up till that point, you know, you want to hang on to everything. You've built this thing and you think yeah. that everybody has to work exactly directly with you all the time and all this stuff. And I knew I was going to be gone for a year. And so I had to, for a year, I set up my team. I started finding out new ways to do this. So I hired, I really trained my team, my brother, that's my buyer's agent, how to show homes. I showed, taught my business partner, Chris, how to really go show homes. And then I taught them how to look at a property. And I said, look, there's a couple things I need to do. The networking side, the phone calls, I have to be the one flying the plane. If we're an airplane, I'm the pilot. I'm going to get us where we're going. I'm going to be the one making sure the value is correct. I'm the one making sure that we're negotiating and getting the best deal or whatever we can. 
But as far as like going to see the home and show them, like you guys can do that as well as I can. And so I, I learned to, so I trained them as well as I could. And then I learned to, you know, if somebody wanted to sell their home, how I could talk to that person and really get to know their home without me actually being there. And so I set up this system where I didn't have to physically be there. And so then I hired really good people. I mean, my team is really good. I brought in a guy this year, Tyler Bennett, to do my investment specialty stuff. And the, the guy sold over 2,000 homes to investors. Like, it's crazy. Like, the fact that this guy wanted to be a part of my team validated everything I've ever done because he's such a high-quality human. And he now helps me with a lot of these investors that I'm working with. And so... But I attracted these people and I paid them really well and I trained them really well. And then just the art of letting it go. And here's the thing is they screw stuff up. Like stuff gets missed. Stuff got screwed up. There's probably people listening to this right now that are like, oh, I didn't have the best experience with it. But we've evolved and grown. And I know we're 10 times the team today as we were when we started. But I was okay letting things, you know, maybe screw up back once or twice in order to get it right going forward and become evolve into the a better, much You've got to be more willing to make team. the mistakes. Yeah, like, you have to be willing to go, it's okay. And my team knows they can screw up. Like, every good company says this. Like, it's okay to screw up. Like, Google has this philosophy. I, Apple, you know, yeah. we're not going to get mad at you. I never get mad at my team when they're trying things and screw it up. Like, I only get mad if, you know, like, they, they don't, you know, like, like, they don't do something that they maybe felt like they should have. And because of that, something didn't get done and it's like if we flip it it's like what are the consequences of your business and the growth and where you were if we rewind and and you would have operated from a sense of i need to hold on to all this like yeah i'd I'd still be the guy that just running my little business and you know i wouldn't have been able to meet these amazing people in my life have these experiences you know i've been to over 40 countries now and i'm you know just for christmas and new year's i'm headed to thailand taiwan cambodia you know just go see the world i'll give you some tips on thailand yeah yeah appreciate that so awesome and uh and, but I, I wanted to live that life and I knew I couldn't do that if I was trying to hoard everything and hold on to it. Yeah. So I hired the best people, helped train them, and then just let them kind of develop into becoming great at what they're doing. Yeah. And then the, the whole keeping them thing is like, I have a friend, he talks about, he's like, build a fire so warm that everyone wants to come to the fire. That's how I kind of picture it in my mind. So I try to build a, a business or a, a life that people will want to come to you as opposed to like if you're trying to get everyone else to go to the farm you're running a stick to this person and a stick to this person but pretty soon fire dies and nobody really gets to enjoy the actual flame and so I try to just tell people like you have to build it where people want to come to you and you know that's how you truly network and, and build a great culture and team that's awesome yeah. well dude I, I, I we're kind of out of time but I've learned. Dude, this has just been fun. Like, yeah, it's great. This, nice. is, this is awesome. Do all day. Uh, so if you know Jimmy, um, like this video, tag tag some friends that maybe are in real estate or in door-to-door or in management, or you, if you're trying to network, maybe share this with somebody, because I, I feel like this is such a unique perspective, and he's, like I said, one of the best networks in the entire city of Utah. You know, he's he's literally doing a podcast with the most influential people out of Utah, like, um, and he's, he's only built that through just the, the work ethic he's had and, and some of the best practices he's been able to apply. So i um, super excited for you to speak at Door to Orcon. It's awesome. And Thanks, I hope, man. I hope uh, some of you guys go check out his podcast, The, the Jimmy, the Jimmy Rex Show. Jimmy Rex yeah, Show. I mean, it's we're getting, we just got more and more awesome guests coming yeah. out. Um, Rudy Gobert's coming out. Is yeah, well, I've, his is in the works. Kyle okay. Vanoy's in the works. I haven't recorded those ones yet, but okay. even the ones that are out right now, I mean, we've got amazing, I mean, we're talking guys worth close to a billion dollars, you know, stand-up comedian Ryan so Hamilton cool. just did one he's got an hour long special on Netflix um, amazing women that have done you know built these businesses here in Utah that are just awesome uh, one woman that she has a polygamy podcast with over 2 million downloads it's the, wow. the ultimate source for all things about just cool things like just different each person's a little bit different but amazing people all of them and uh, yeah and then I'll plug my own business if you guys want somebody that's an expert to help you you know buy or sell a house please let me know and we always try to just create value so even if you're not looking to buy but maybe you just want to know what your home's worth reach out I'm pretty easy to find and if anybody wants to buy my house it's a three beds up two beds down basement apartment hit me up that's right it'll be going <laughs> on the market next yeah, week yeah it's, so. like it's coming out pre-market <laughs> um, okay no but thank you for being on the show man. awesome man oh, thank you awesome <laughs>